Kelly, a great uh, intro right before we go to, he's been dubbed the America's Master Griller. He's been an author, uh, he's still an author. He's been a television, the barbecue Bible, uh, all this good stuff. He's got a new book coming out in June. It's the best ribs, best ribs ever, 100 killer recipes, including slaws, baked beans, and finger licking sauces. It is Stephen Reichland. Stephen, how are you doing? Couldn't be better. How about yourself? You know what? We're getting ready for a great Memorial Day weekend coming up here. Uh, beautiful weather lying ahead of us just here in northwest Indiana, just south of Chicago. And uh, we're looking forward to it and uh, thinking about ribs, man. What better food to, than uh, ribs? Uh, well, I sure think so. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, ribs are quintessential American barbecue. Well, you know, what, what makes the ribs so popular among the masses? Well, I think a couple things. First of all, meat next to the bone always has more flavor. Second of all, you get to eat ribs with your fingers, uh, which uh, always uh, is a great pleasure for uh, for people. Less dishes. Um, and then <laughs> third of all, there's you know there's just something so primal about a big hunk of meat with the bones on it. Yeah, there is something about that. Like you, you're talking about. Uh, I was talking to my friends the other day. Now. Um, a lot of people are, you know, throughout the country, you have obviously the different styles of ribs. And uh, some people are, uh, you know, the, the pork uh, ribs fans. I myself like the beef ribs a little bit better. Uh, and I think maybe just because you don't usually get a bigger piece of uh, rib, you know, with the beef. You know, you can be hanging out and it just, there is something, like you said, it feels like being a caveman again. Uh, absolutely. Now, Stephen. Um, and, you know, ribs are also universal. I mean, we think that... Uh, here in North America, we kind of wrote the, you know, the Bible and verse on ribs. But in fact, as you travel around Planet Barbecue, uh, ribs are popular in virtually every country and every culture. Yeah, whether you see, I know reading in the book, you have, uh, what's nice about your new book, I, obviously this is actually, um, you added a new chapter, correct, with a bunch of nice... Well, we added about 20% of material. Yeah. We put those three menus with recipes at the end. And well, what's really nice though about this book for people, it it talks about the different styles, and as what I really enjoyed is the kind of the history around the world and talking about whether it's the Korean barbecues, the styles that they do it, or even the what you you know the Italians, or uh, I believe are the ones that kind of uh, boil them into their soup. Is that right? Uh, yeah, the Italians use either a, uh, well, they use a braise method very often, braise. and the uh, for the milk and honey ribs from. Uh, the Piedmont in um, best ribs uh, ever. I uh, I sort of adapted that to an indirect grill, uh, you know, sort of slow smoke indirect grill kind of technique. Now, why is it ribs? It seems like everyone is an expert. Um, <laughs> and, uh, not you know, just like every, you know, every guy around here is like, oh, I make the best ribs. This is is, is there's just something like a pride based thing about ribs too. Well, you know, I think ribs are a little bit like the hot rod of uh, of, uh, of barbecue or the Harley of barbecue. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, definitely the glamour uh, glamour element. But uh, what I found as I was researching this book is, um, if you look a little bit behind that veneer of uh, of sort of pride and boastfulness, that there's actually a great deal of confusion uh, surrounding ribs, and you know. People sort of want to know, well, am I, uh, you know, am I using baby backs or spare ribs? Is it an indirect grill or is it a smoke? Am I supposed to remove, remove the membrane, dry rub, wet marinade? Um, and, in fact, one of the reasons I wrote the book is I really felt like, um, uh, you know, and, and guys don't like to admit there are things that uh, we don't know. Okay? <laughs> so that's what I mean. Well, you know what's nice, too, is it, it, you give directions, but not, like, directions like where guys – these are things that guys can follow along. In fact, one of the cool things is you've got a, a nice, basic, foolproof recipe uh, for first-timers for doing ribs. I mean, Yeah, the whole – I'm glad you picked up on that. The, um, the whole idea, idea of the first-timers, this, this was a rib recipe for uh, a guy or gal who has never made a rib before. 
and I really wanted to walk your hand, you know, through the meat department, telling you what kind of rib to buy, how to prep it, how to make the rub. I mean, because this is a, a, a very good rib. Uh, it's a very, um, you know, very complex flavors. You have a rub, you have a cider-based mop sauce, you've got uh, a lemon brown sugar barbecue sauce that's homemade from scratch, you've got wood chips, you know, at least five layers of flavor in these ribs. And yet, they're really, if you follow the directions, you know, if you've never cooked ribs before, you'll be able to do it. And that's the thing, too, about ribs is that we're, um, I know some of my apprehension towards uh, fish grilling, I always get worried about that because I don't want to spend the money and then have something ruined like that. That's why you try to tend to stay away from experimenting sometimes. But that's what's really nice about this rib uh, recipe it does give you that confidence you know what i'm going to buy the right stuff that's going to and i could go look for the prices that fit my budget and i can grill something with confidence in here uh one of the cool things i also like in your book is the um the fact that we talked about around the world the different parts uh, here in northwest indiana we have a very large um hispanic uh, background uh, one of the larger uh, populations of the area is that and uh, some of the uh, stuff uh one of the recipes I see, the Cousin Dave's Chocolate Chipotle Ribs. And talk a little bit how that has a little bit of Mexican influence. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you may recognize in that combination of flavors uh, the, the sort of uh, the skeleton of uh, the famous mole poblano, the famous, uh, the famous uh, thick sauce made of dried fruits and chilies and unsweetened chocolate and ground, uh, ground nuts. Uh, from Poblano in Mexico, and my cousin Dave is a uh, anthropology professor uh, who lives in Tucson, Arizona, and he uh, earned his way through uh, graduate school by staging barbecues for friends. Uh, but it's a it, it's a riff on that Mexican combination. And you know, and also what's another good thing about this book, like I said, is some of the different uh, not just ribs, but also some of the uh, the sides that go with a good barbecue. And uh, what's what's one of those recipes that you, is I, I hate I don't want to use the word favorite, but what's something that you would sure. think that uh, you would you would kind of push someone to try for the uh, to for a nice barbecue for something a little bit different than an ordinary. Well, you know, I mean, first of all, grilled corn. I am uh, I'm a huge partisan of grilled corn. And when I grill corn, I actually uh, do it with the husk off. I think that is really important. Uh, when you grill corn with the husk on, um, in effect, you're steaming it, and it just doesn't really have much in the way of, um, of flavor. Uh, another really good one is the uh, smoked macaroni and cheese. Now, you know, macaroni and cheese is... Uh, I mean, everybody makes macaroni and cheese, but when you cook it on the grill, you add a depth of flavor and a layer of complexity that, uh, you know, people won't soon forget. Uh, Stephen, and also one of the cool things is that you talk about not just your traditional ribs in terms of, uh, you know, your your pig, your your cow, um, you know, the beef and stuff, but you, you even mentioned that there are some places that actually do fish ribs. Uh, yeah, there's actually a guy in uh, Las Vegas who uh, discovered a fish from the Amazon that has big enough ribs to cook. Uh, obviously, you know, there's a little bit of a novelty in that they are not available really in the United States uh, unless you go to his restaurant. But uh, I do also give a version of that rib uh, with veal ribs. And veal ribs can be ordered from your local butcher, and, you know, I'll wager to say that 99 out of 100 of your listeners have not had veal ribs, but they're really good, definitely worth trying. It's the cruelest of meats, <laughs> I've heard before. Now, Stephen, uh, real quick, uh, people want to get more information about uh, the book and everything else that you're doing. What's, uh, how can they get a hold of you? Or not hold of you, it's but... my website, which is barbecuebible.com, and that's B-A-R-B-E. B-U-E-B-I-B-L-E dot com. And uh, if you want to follow me on Facebook, I am at uh, Stephen Reichlin Author. And my last name is spelled R-A-I-C-H-L-E-N. And all this week, both on the website and uh, on Facebook and Twitter, we'll be, uh, we'll be communicating about ribs, great recipes, tips for success, etc. And Stephen, I had one of my callers, uh, he asked me a question. He, he's been yeah. uh, doing grilling on pizza for a long time. Uh, any, yeah. any tips for uh, the pizza grillers out there? Well, pizza grillers, uh, absolutely. I mean, first of all, you have two basic strategies. 
And one strategy is to kind of turn your grill into a pizza oven, in which case you get a grill stone, you lay it on the pizza, you cook the dough on the hot stone. For me, far more interesting is actually to cook the dough right on the grill grate. This was something I learned to do at a restaurant called Al Forno in Providence, Rhode Island. And if you hit it right and you have just the right fire and your dough is nice and wet, uh, it'll sort of bubble up and get crackly and crusty and blistered on the outside and nice and chewy on the inside. Uh, and you will find a recipe for grilled pizza in several of my books. I've got one in How to Grill. I've got one in Barbecue Bible. So, um, you know, it's a t terrific preparation. There you go. And, fi folks, you can find uh, Stephen's books if you want to order them around here. Uh, go to our good friends at Miles Books in Highland. They can order them up uh, via the different websites for you, and you, you support a local business as well as uh, Absolutely. helping out. Absolutely. Support your local bookstore. Well, Nothing's more important than that. Stephen, I just want to say uh, it's, just, uh, it's really cool to talk to you, and I've always enjoyed your show uh, on PBS throughout, and uh, very jealous of that backyard of yours. <laughs> ah, <laughs> thanks a lot. I think that's hey, a guy's nice dream. To you guys. Stephen, have a great day and a happy Memorial Day. You too. Take care. There you go. That's Stephen Reichlin with his new book, Barbecue Bible, The Best Ribs Ever's 100 Killer Recipes, including slaws, baked beans, and finger-licking sauce. That's Stephen Reichlin, and you can learn more about him, uh, contact workman.com. But call Diana and them over there at Miles Books and order it up.